four. Okay, Nick Mantis joins us now with a look at sports. And Nick, Michigan State's men's basketball game came down to a crazy final shot. Yes, Sarah, with three seconds left, Tyson Walker was able to win the biggest game of the year for the Spartans. We have full team coverage from the Breslin Center that you do not want to miss. Plus, we were also at the Michigan State Hockey Senior Night. Good, the Spartans send their seniors out with a win. Well, you're going to find out when we come back. This is 6 News Now, sponsored by the University of Michigan. Closer to home, Winterfest made its return to Lansing this weekend with ice sculptures and games all around the downtown district. 6 News reporter Josh Sanchez caught up with the organizers of this year's festivities to find out how they prepared for the event's second year. Josh? Sarah, the executive director of Downtown Lansing, Inc., says that last year's Winterfest unexpectedly had a huge turnout, so this year they are prepared to go even bigger with more fun, food, and festivities. Last year's Winterfest was our first year, so we learned some lessons for sure. It was 50 and sunny, and today we have true winter weather. Ice sculptures along the Grand River and a real-life Hungry Hungry Hippo game on the City Hall ice rink. Hundreds of people attended today's Winterfest, an event turning downtown Lansing into a winter playland. Among the crowd were several downtown businesses and a few familiar Six News faces. Some guests even came from around the state to take in the fun. And we thought, oh, well, you know, it's a Saturday. Why not make the drive, make a day out of it? Struggle a little bit in the mid-rounds, right? We had, it took us a while to figure out the right strategy. Um, but I think, I think we're feeling confident going further into the playoffs. We'll make a deep run, I think. Along the riverfront, visitors were greeted with stands from different area businesses. And a market showcased all the city has to offer. Even those used to warmer temperatures took part in the fun, like a mom who recently moved back to Lansing after spending several years in California. I love California, so coming back to Michigan, it was it's a transition for the winter, but I'm telling you, just getting out and just enjoying the element, whether I'm in California or Michigan, is enjoying every part, portion of the elements. From outdoor games to food stands, she says she enjoyed seeing the community come together to play games while also supporting small businesses. We're getting our exercise in, we come down here, we came down here especially for the Smoothie Queen, so we're down here to see her today. And it's just, it's just great just seeing everyone out having a good time. Now looking ahead into the summer, organizers with Downtown Lansing Inc. say that there are plans to take advantage of the warmer weather with large outdoor events along the riverfront and downtown blocks. Actually, a pretty nice day for us here in Mid Michigan. We did see a couple rounds of snow flurries in the early morning hours of the day today, but they didn't really amount to much in terms of it. This is the Six Sports Desk. The intensity of today's Michigan State men's basketball game against the fourth-ranked Purdue Boilermakers was boiling over the edge of the Breslin Center. The Spartans have been in a February funk, losing five of their last six games, and a win today would be huge when it comes to the seeding for March Madness. Now let's get you out to the action. Tom Izzo in for a fight against Matt Painter's big men who have been the example of Big Ten toughness this season. We jump to the second half. MSU led by as many as 11 points, but Purdue's Zach Eady at seven foot four is just too much to handle as he gets two of his career high 25 points, making it a three point game. Now, MSU answering right back with a pick and roll as Max Christie finds Marcus Bingham Jr. for the one handed slam, taking back some of the momentum. Then, with less than a minute to play, Jaden Ivey drops it off to Travion Williams, who gets his own rebound and drops it in to tie it at 65 with 30 seconds left. Tom Izzo calls a timeout to set up this play. Walker with Williams on him. Three seconds to shoot. Game winner Tyson Walker. The knockout punch to upset the number four team in the nation as the Spartans win it 65 or 68 to 65. Our Audrey Dahlgren was at the game and shares why the outcome of today's game shouldn't come as a surprise. 
Ever since the early 90s, Michigan State and Purdue have been involved in their fair share of battles on the hardwood. So why would today's meeting be any different? With 1.4 seconds left on the clock, Tyson Walker hit the game winning three and immediately it brought back a memory from 2018 for both Matt Painter and Tom Izzo. Last time we kind of had the same scenario. Five seconds to go. Bridges for three. Miles Bridges hit the same kind of three in front of their bench at the end right there. So you know you're going to have to bat. I was proud of our guys the way we rebounded. I thought we did a good job on the glass, and that's always tough to out rebound a Michigan State team. But yeah, we've had some good battles through the years. Audrey, I remember every shot ever taken to win a game. Um, that's something that goes in your brain and never. I do see Miles. I see it up there. I got a picture of it. I do think these teams have had some battles. I mean, I, I talk to Katie still all the time, and uh, when I look back at the years, um, and that includes when Judd was here, I mean, there were some battles. I just knew even if they score, in my head, I'm like, if they score, I'm going to come down and make a shot. Because I felt the same way when we played Illinois, that, but they scored that time. But I was going to come down and make a shot at Illinois. So I was like, today I'm going to make a shot, and we're going to win a game like that. With the Boilermakers being the fourth best team in the country, the Spartans knew they had to come into this game with a lot of energy as well as effort. And afterwards, Izzo made a point to mention several times how his team earned this win. At the Breslin Center, Audrey Dahlgren, Six Sports. Well, thank you, Otto. After the game in the Breslin Center, Gabe Brown and the guys danced their way over to Munai Serena for Michigan State Hockey's final game of the regular season. And the fellas on the hardwood brought plenty of good vibes to the Vellas on the ice. It was senior night for the Spartans, who were hoping to end their 13-game losing streak. In the first period, MSU came out ready to snap that streak. Josh Nodler comes up with a rebound in front of the net. It puts the Spartans on the board. Then, with just under a minute to left in the first period, Penn State's Kevin Wall sneaks one past the red line to tie things up. But that wouldn't phase the Spartans. With nine seconds left in the first, Okamis alum and senior Adam Goodsir snipes one from the left side. And that would be the game winner as the Spartans beat Penn State 2-1. to one. Or Ian Quest was there and has more on what this means for these seniors. A win on senior night will always leave you satisfied no matter the sport. But for these seven seniors on the hockey team, this win just means a little bit more considering what they went through with this 13-game losing streak. And they even told themselves before stepping on this ice, they had no intention of losing tonight. We were talking about it all day, just, you know, kind of win for our seniors and, you know, bring the energy. And when we do that, we're a good team. So, you know, it translated on the ice tonight and, you know, we had a heck of a game. It was, uh, it was a tough year so far, a tough 2022, and, you know, just happy to get a win on senior night for these guys, and, and the team worked hard, and, and we really played our butt off, and, uh, you know, it was it felt good to finally get back in the win comp. This is a struggle we've been going through. The guys have been have been awesome. It's in the locker room every day. No one gave up, and it's just a special moment uh, to end the streak on an extremely special night. Now, the Spartans are sure going to enjoy this one tonight. Mitchell Lewandowski even told me he had 30 family members and friends in attendance, but after tonight, it's back to work because the Spartans will now get ready for Michigan in the Big Ten Tournament next weekend. At Mon Ice Arena, Ian Kress, Six Sports. Thank you, Ian. Speaking of senior night, Michigan State women's basketball team will be saying goodbye to four seniors during their senior day festivities tomorrow. There's Tamara Farquhar, Alicia Smith, Laurel Jackman, and the Spartans leader, Nia Cloudin. Uh, with her 22 points in the loss to Michigan on Thursday night, Cloudin passed All-American Ariel Powers for the number two spot on the Spartans' career scoring list. Nia is 379 points shy of tying Tori Jankoska at the top of the list. Now, it's not, not likely that Nia will score 379 points in tomorrow's game against Ohio State, but after four years, there is one thing that head coach Susie Merchant knows Nia will bring in tomorrow's game. Consistency. Like, I never have had to talk to her about her attitude or her effort. Like, it's the same, like, every day. And she, she's just the same. And I think that's kind of sometimes can be a lost art in players. They get distracted by, oh, you know, this happened, or I wasn't feeling this, or I had a little cold here, or I'm a little tired. I mean, people can talk themselves into a lot of things. I think Nia's never done that. Like, she's been consistent. Her dependability is something in the game that you really appreciate as a coach, too. 
MSU cross country runner Jenna Magnus defended her Big Ten Indoor 5000 meter championship this afternoon. We'll be right back with the final of your forecast, so stay with us. This is 6 News Now, sponsored by the University of Michigan. Closer to home, Winterfest made its return to Lansing this weekend with ice sculptures and games all around the downtown district. 6 News reporter Josh Sanchez caught up with the organizers of this year's festivities to find out how they prepared for the event's second year. Josh? Sarah, the executive director of Downtown Lansing, Inc., says that last year's Winterfest unexpectedly had a huge turnout, so this year they are prepared to go even bigger with more fun, food, and festivities. Last year's Winterfest was our first year, so we learned some lessons for sure. It was 50 and sunny, and today we have true winter weather. Ice sculptures along the Grand River and a real-life Hungry Hungry Hippo game on the City Hall ice rink. Hundreds of people attended today's Winterfest, an event turning downtown Lansing into a winter playland. Among the crowd were several downtown businesses and a few familiar Six News faces. Some guests even came from around the state to take in the fun. And we thought, oh, well, you know, it's a Saturday. Why not make the drive, make a day out of it? Struggle a little bit in the mid rounds, right? We had, it took us a while to figure out the right strategy. Um, but I think, I think we're feeling confident going further into the playoffs. We'll make a deep run, I think. Along the riverfront, visitors were greeted with stands from different area businesses. And a market showcased all the city has to offer. Even those used to warmer temperatures took part in the fun, like a mom who recently moved back to Lansing after spending several years in California. I love California, so coming back to Michigan, it was it's a transition for the winter, but I'm telling you, just getting out and just enjoying the element, whether I'm in California or Michigan, is enjoying every part, portion of the elements. From outdoor games to food stands, she says she enjoyed seeing the community come together to play games while also supporting small businesses. We're getting our exercise in, we come down here, we came down here especially for the Smoothie Queen, so we're down here to see her today. And it's just, it's just great just seeing everyone out having a good time. Now looking ahead into the summer, organizers with Downtown Lansing Inc. say that there are plans to take advantage of the warmer weather with large outdoor events along the riverfront and downtown blocks. Actually, a pretty nice day for us here in mid Michigan. We did see a couple rounds of snow flurries in the early morning hours of the day today, but they didn't really amount to much in terms of accumulation. Temperatures dropping down to 23 degrees tonight in the mid Michigan area as clouds continue to clear out. We're dealing with mostly clear conditions tonight and also to start off the day tomorrow. A couple of isolated snow showers possible in the morning, but overall, the dry weather will remain in place for the next six days. No major temperature swings in sight. We will stick with the 20 degree overnight lows, with the exception for Monday night and the 30 degree temperatures for our highs. Nick, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. We're 30s. This it's not going to be snowing. No snow. You don't have to worry about brushing off your car. You can just kind of go to work and just... What are we going to do? About. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be an easy transition because I think there's going to be a lot more benefits than, than not having all this weather, but <laughs> it, it'll be fun. We'll, we'll be fine. We'll be good. Yeah. We'll be good. Definitely tomorrow. Taking advantage of it. There you go. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your night.